nice. What kind of answer is that? Try harder. Yeah, the, 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 just for the sake, say it's beautiful. Tobias sighs, a look of annoyance spreading on his face. This is obviously isn't his favourite pastime. I can't imagine him was one too loosely spread compliments on those around him. You've been given pie for free. Just say it's good, we'll move on. It's fine, you can keep this. Well, I guess that's <laughs> good too. Oh, good. I always try to come up with new recipes for our inn. You see, it'll be a really nice place with lots of special things like this. She really glows when talking about this place. I guess she truly loves these kind of things. The door opened once again and another guest enters the inn. Hey, it's grounded today, huh? You're just saying that to make fun of me, aren't you? She suddenly pouts as Gavin cheerfully approaches us. Ah, uh, no, wait. What are you eating? Can I have some of that too? No, what they have, it's all that's left. Ah, uh, you'll share some with me, Tobias, won't you? <laughs> he had a hard enough time complimenting it, but he actually did in the end. Like, <laughs> he's definitely not going to fucking share it with you. Gavin nudges the already annoying Tobias while grinning. Tobias remains silent, trying to ignore the intruder. No, he won't. He's not done tasting it yet. Tobias fires his brow with a deep sigh. I'm done, bye. With that, he leaves the inn behind. Erin calls out to stop him, but it's too late. What a spoil sport. Oh, Gavin's... <laughs> I was going to say, Gavin's reeling in here. Let's face it, if, if there was just those two in a room and you had to eject one of them, you would eject Tobias, wouldn't you? We haven't lost anything. Him or me? I'll let you figure that out by yourself. <laughs> so that was all about tasting her pie. Right. Right, come on, back to the main street. We, we're spending so much time in this town. Once again, I spot Timon on the street just outside the inn. Good day. Good day. Hello, Lena. How are you feeling? I'm fine. The wounds haven't been troubling me for a while now. Yes, you haven't had to face anything for a while now. There will be something, and I'm sure they'll come up again. That's good to hear. It's important that... Simon, did you find the bucket yet? We need it. Erin's voice suddenly bursts through the door, from the open door to the inn, interrupting our conversation. In an awkward moment, Simon's air of authority is momentarily blown away by the gentle summer breeze. <laughs> yeah, that and Erin shouting! Like, it's not just that, is it? Uh, excuse me. Alright, I'll see you later. He turns around and leaves to the small shed next to the inn. How typical, Simon is much too nice to refuse to help them. I wonder, could it be that he's actually having a hard time living with Mary and Erin? I, I doubt it. I shake my head, erasing the ominous picture in my mind of the smiling devil horned sisters as they loom over their prey. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely what they're doing. Of course not, I'm just imagining things. <laughs> oh, God. I genuinely prefer a scene with Tob uh, Tobias, with uh, Gavin. He might be cocky, but come on. Tobias prepared a simple soup for dinner. It's a quiet evening as usual. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to those raves we normally have. I don't know what to do or say. It doesn't seem like Tobias wants to talk about anything anyway. Yeah, welcome to his world. He places our bowls on the table and sits down to eat. Oh, what is it? I think I forgot to use salt. The salt, it's up here, right? I get up and head towards the shelves. I can see a small jar on the top shelf. That should be it. Remember, it could be sugar as well. No, I'll get it. It's all right. You're injured. Sit down. He tells me off in his usual demeaning tone, which only annoys me even more. And I stubbornly just say I'll do it anyway? Yeah, I thought so. I'm not that helpless anymore. I can do it. I stubbornly reach up for the salt jar while Tobias interrupts and tries to push me away. As a result, our feet get tangled up in our stupid little struggle and I lose my balance. Ah! Look out! Have I just been knocked out? Thump. I land hard on my back and pain shoots through my whip rib cage. I even see stars for just a short moment. Ooh. Something heavy is on top of me. I... What? What's just happened? Did... Tobias, get off. I imagine your mouth will taste much like the contents of the jar we were squibbling over. I open my eyes and Tobias and I find ourselves staring each other in the face. Did he fall too? Tobias just lies there, staring down at me with a blank expression as if paralysed. He stays like that for a few moments without saying a word. Again, a few moments! 
moments, we're like this. We're staring at each other like this, apparently, for like, what, 180 seconds? That's a long fucking time. There's got to be a point where you're just like, this is a bit awkward, isn't it? Um, Tobias? Uh, uh, yes? He shudders and blinks in confusion as if he just woke up. Would you mind getting off me? His eyes open even wider as he realises our position. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, of course. He hurries up and extends a hand to help me up. I, I just wanted to catch you before you fell, and I guess it didn't really work out. I take his hand and grab back to my feet. Great, my wound throws throbs a little. But at least it doesn't seem like I took any real damage. It should be fine. Tobias quickly reaches out and takes a jar down, and then returns to the dinner table. As I, also, as I also get back to take my seats, I can't help but steal a glance towards Tobias. He doesn't look at me at all. Actually, it looks like he's trying to deny my presence completely now. That's probably for the best. Something about this introverted behaviour of his seems different than usual. I open my mouth to say something when Tobias suddenly gets up from his chair. I'm done. I have something to take care of now anyway, so, uh, later. up. His gaze still averted, he grabs his equipment and leaves the house before I can say a word. Alright then. From the looks of his plate, he only ate half his dinner, and he usually always cleans up after himself before going anywhere, that is, unless we got into a fight. Was he angry? I don't think so. Oh well, with a sigh, I finish my own meal and continue to clean up after both of us. Please don't tell me that, like, <laughs> we're on Tobias's path of all things. Oh, what a dreadful thought. A murmur of inhuman voices are floating in the edge of my consciousness. Among the incomprehensible sounds, one stands out above the rest, a deep, mysterious voice that sounds neither male or female. It's your own fault. A menacing voice, although I can feel it is not directed towards me, like intercepting a message I can hear these thoughts that are not meant for me. It is because you chose to do nothing the girl meant disaster. You are just reaping the results of your own weakness. Is this supposed to be for Tobias? You don't get this shit happening because YOLO. Aaron? Yeah, I wonder. I stand my eyes open and jolt up in bed. It's not enough information to actually make some sort of a hypothesis on it, so we shan't and just forget it ever happened. The sun is rising outside, so there is already a light seeping into the room. Something completely different and peaceful compared to the deep darkness that I was only in moments earlier. What? What was that? I rubbed my eyes and tried to make sense of the dream I just had. It creeps me out, and yet there was something familiar about it. What was it? Something definitely unpleasant. I shiver and shake it off. Even though it's early, I decide to get up and look out the window. Blue sky with only a hint of clouds. The birds are singing cheerfully. I'm amazed you can see it from that angle. Today is the festival. It's as if the weather knew that today was going to be special. <laughs> you can't say that. It's probably going to piss it down now. The festival, huh? Erin is probably already up and working. She has been so excited for this day, but somehow I can still only think about what is hiding in those mountains and what challenges might come. It's not over yet. My heart knows this. Maybe I should talk to Simon about it and prepare for some sort of kind of countermeasure. We finished all the soldiers. The only one unaccounted for is Adelaide, since Tobias couldn't find her body, but it is unlikely that she would pose much of a threat after what happened. It is unlikely that she survived those wounds and the fall to begin with. So, maybe the dream was a ran about Adelaide? The girl reaped disaster, but you chose to do nothing. You are now reaping the rewards of your weak actions. It's something like that. It could be. Is it just going to be the next time Aaron comes around? Is she's going to be on his shoulder? Uh, it's curious, I'll give them that. They have, they have piqued my curiosity somewhat. It is unlikely that she survived those wounds in the fall to begin with. That's what he said, since he had felt the disturbance as well. He had agreed that it would be best to keep our guard up, but also pointed out that the danger was minimal. We'll stay here for a few days to make sure that the area is safe and that no more Hellenians can have crossed the border. Why had it taken me by surprise? Chances are that we finished what he stayed here to do, so it's only logical that he is planning our departure. Somehow I didn't think it would come so soon. 
What are you thinking, Elena? It makes no sense. You have to stop speaking to yourself. This will cause bad news. I get up from bed and decide to let those thoughts go. It's a new day. And where are we going? Uh, it's going to be a fight between those two. Sod that. And he's outside town by an old tree that I see something unexpected. It's Simon. He's sitting up against a trunk, jacket over his shoulder, and eyes closed. Yes, he's sleeping. Is he sleeping? I get the urge to kneel down beside him and stare at his face. You get the urge to kneel down beside him and stare at him? Yeah, that's totally normal. It looks like he really is. He looks so peaceful this way that I can't make myself bother him. So, I'm about to get back up when I feel suddenly something holding onto my cape. It's okay, you don't have to leave. He finally opens his eyes and looks at me, seemingly not fully awake yet. Oh, I thought you were sleeping. I might have drowsed off for a moment. Good fortune that you woke up when I was turning around. I sit back down next to him. There is a gentle breeze rustling through the leaves alone, above? Alone, yes, above. And I can hear the birds singing in the sunshine. This is really a nice spot away from the liveliness of the town. Why are you all the way out here? Those two were working on something for the festival. I felt like getting out of the way. By those two, he must mean the sisters in the inn where he was staying. Who knows, just thinking of what ideas they could come up with, it might have been a very good idea for Simon to get out in time. I bet they're being very noisy these days. Yeah, you could say that. He sighs and closes his eyes again. I fall silent as well and look up the blue sky through the roofs of the leaves above. The festival, huh? Celebrating our victory, but are we really alright? What about this uneasy feeling in my heart? Heartburn. No, oh well. I lean back like Simon and close my eyes, chasing away this uncertainty. I can't ask him now while he's looking like this. I can't destroy this moment of peace. It's not like he would have thought of these things himself anyway. <laughs> Wouldn't have, right. I was going to say, I thought he said would have, and it's like, don't mock him like that. I'm happy you're here too. I look at him in surprise, but his expression hasn't changed. I'm happy you're here too. Those are my thoughts as well, but hearing him say them is completely unexpected. It must be because he's already half asleep. The sound of steady breathing reaches my ears, telling me that he drowsed off again. I sit in silence, pondering his words. Yes, being caught up here without any comrades, facing all these problems, all one on one's own. It would have been a daunting task, maybe even to him. Still, his sentiment makes me happy, a little happy. If I hadn't been around here, I imagine Simon would be dead by now. <laughs> Gavin would have killed him in the forest, and even if he had one, Tobias then would have shot an arrow through his head once he went to go. A smile surfaces on my face while I bask in the calm of this place. Sleep well. You're gonna wake up, there's gonna be wolves around us? Bollocks, no, just straight to the festival. All the townspeople have joined in preparing for the festival. Neighbours are happily chatting with each other and laughing at jokes. The baker is preparing her stall with freshly made bread and cakes. Some of them in imaginative shapes and colours. On the other side of the road, someone is busy hanging from more homemade paper lanterns on his roof. Not all of his decorations look expensive or professional, as they are made of whatever the creator had in hand. But the streets already look festive and happy. I feel myself sneaking a smile when looking at how hard their hard work is paying off. And I didn't even do anything. <laughs> well, it's good to admit that you're lazy. The first stage is getting out of the stage of denial. That's not true. Before I know it, Erin has walked up beside me and is watching the preparations. It's because of you guys that we are doing this in the first place, remember? We could have ended up in serious trouble if those soldiers had found our home. I wonder, we may have stopped the immediate disaster, but what will happen when Simon and I return home? Will we be able to avoid having even more soldiers coming up here after that incident? I'm not even sure this place is safe at present. Oh, Lena, you always know how to put a positive spin on them things. So, who are you bringing to the dance? Erin smiles mischievously. What? Is that your answer to every question? No, just the unexpected stupid ones. Why would I bring anyone? She stares me in the face. Her expression has changed to that of annoyance and disappointment. Are you serious? You're not going together with anyone? I was certain you would go with Simon. I tell myself not to get any ideas from her questions, but yet I can't help but flushing faintly. Flushing faintly, blushing faintly. 
Of course not. I mean, I wouldn't dance with him. He's my superior officer. I'm amazed I didn't think you were that stubborn. You two definitely look like you were closer than that. <sighs> this conversation is turning bad. <laughs> turning? It turned bad about 30 seconds ago. What about Tobias? You should know each other well by now, or maybe that, that guy, Gavin. <laughs> yeah, it's not like you know him. Just refer to him as that guy. That guy? I feel a little sorry for Gavin. It seems the two of them are getting along well, and Tobias is only trouble. No way. I don't remember you mentioning having a partner either. Why don't you ask Gavin? He seems to like you as well. Well, I have my stall to take care of. No time for that for me. I have to do it since my sister is taking part in the dance. I don't have anyone to go. I don't have to go with anyone, really. Really? Hmm. She looks dissatisfied by my answer and watches me closely. I could almost see her in her eyes, how she imagines all sorts of couplings with me. Come on. Then her expression suddenly changes again. Have you ever attended a festival before? I bet they have many of them in the big cities. Huh? Oh yes, well, not really. Are you going to ask me who I went with beforehand? I have seen them though while on guard duty. I was escorting one of the guests. Escort? There must have been someone terribly important. Well, putting that aside, that means this will be your first festival after all. Did that just make her even happier? I can't help but sigh at her enthusiasm. I can't help but sigh at her in general. Then I will have to do it. Do what? I'll take you. I'll show you how to have fun. Maybe I can even find someone to hook you up with along the way. Didn't you have a stand to take care of? Oh, you're right. Now it's her turn to sigh at disappointment. <laughs> Not the brightest of sparks in the bulb box. What a shame. I wish I could ask Mary to do it, but she already has a date. Ah, I really wanted to do it too. Do what? Have a date or show me around? <sighs> this girl gives me a headache sometimes. I don't even think I'd have the energy to follow her around during the festival. It sounds like a battle on its own. <laughs> Am I supposed to be having a romantic scene with everyone? The only person remaining left is now Gavin. <laughs> I have a... Oh, that'd be awful. You know the kind of bloke he is. It's like, oh, are you happy to see me or is that a sword in your pocket? You know, those kind of things. Uh, remember to stop by the inn before night break. I have something for you. The dress. I can imagine what the something is and her command makes me feel uneasy, but Erin has already left me behind and waving back at me as she hurries to the inn. Only a few hours left, huh? <laughs> night is falling. Oh, wow. Well, it, it's the first picture which has impressed me. That is definitely pretty. However, we haven't asked Simon out. By my records, we have about five minutes, so chop fucking chop, Len. We're in a rush now.